each of us with our own historic, uh, uh, historic trauma, whether it was personal to us in the case of my neighbor or personal to our ancestors, uh, we sort of got on with things and tried to make the best of it and live as a community. I think having grown up in Toronto, never knowing the history of Dundas or Vaughan or even some of the history of Sir John A, this is an opportunity for us to evolve our understanding and I don't think tearing down the statue is, is the best way to do it. David Menzies for Rebel News here in downtown Toronto and folks I'm back at Queen's Park and as you can see behind us that used to be the statue of Sir John A. Macdonald, our founding Prime Minister. Well, he's still there. It's been almost three years since the powers that be boarded him up in a coffin and placed a garbage bag over his head, if you can imagine. And guess what? It doesn't look like this issue is going away anytime soon. It's in the hands of a committee, and it could take several months, even years, before they come up with a decision of what to do with the Sir John A. Macdonald statue. And my goodness, how things change in the space of five years. Back in 2018, I believe it was, the city of Victoria, they were first out of the gates with their cancel culture for statues. They took down their Sir John A. Macdonald and Premier Ford at the time said, if you don't want him in Victoria, send him to Toronto. We'll put him on the North Lawn of Queen's Park. Well, five years later, we didn't get that statue in the existing one. Well, it's like something that is shameful that has to be covered up, absolutely disgraceful. But I can tell you someone who's finally speaking out about this provincial disgrace and is Toronto mayoral candidate, Rob Davis. Mr. Davis recently wrote a column in the Toronto Sun, uh, basically advocating for the liberty of the Sir John A. Macdonald statue. And, Rob Davis joins me now. First of all, Rob, thank you so much for making time for me again. And uh, let's just get to the crux of the matter. What is your position on this statue? Well, I think we should free Sir John A. Um, but when I say free him, I don't mean absolve him of any of the sins that he may have committed in the past. When I say free him, I think we should put him on the North Lawn and put him into context. You know, there are a lot of disreputable characters that are part of our history and we don't want to forget the history, we don't want to forget the bad things that they've done, but we also don't want to forget the good thing that, things that they've done too. Human beings are ultimately flawed. We're all flawed uh, people, and so I think it would be a unique opportunity for us to put these historical statues into context if we created a statuary park on the North Lawn of Queen's Park. So if you have a statue in your town that people keep spray painting or graffitiing or trying to tear down, send it to Toronto. We'll create a unique uh, and very um, interesting tourist uh, destination by putting all of these statues in one place. We'll have people write interpretive comments about you know, each of the individuals involved and it'd be a way for people to learn about our history in all of its, you know, its warts and all. And I think that's the appropriate way to deal with statues like Sir John A. You know, what you can't see on this camera, there are some tiny children's shoes on the north side of this box, obviously representing the children who were taken and put in residential schools. I support that. I think people have the right to freedom of expression and we should learn all about Sir John A, warts and all. I think your proposal of having these so-called politically incorrect statues mounted on the north lawn of Queen's Park and maybe a plaque explaining you know the the historical context of these statues I think that's way more let's say adult than just boarding them up and uh, pretending they don't exist as though our first Prime Minister is not a person to celebrate but is someone to be shameful of. Well listen um in Toronto, we're having a by-election because we, our mayor uh, had an affair with a staffer. Mm. And yet, 30 to 40 percent of people would vote for him again if he had registered to run in this <laughs> by-election. So I, I just think it behooves us to sort of apply the same sort of humanity mm. to Sir John A. Macdonald as we do to uh, not yet Sir John Tory. Yes. You know, I, I, I think there's room in our hearts uh, for forgiveness and context. And I'm not suggesting that the, hor the horrific conditions under which Indigenous children suffered should be forgiven, but I think 
we want to elevate their story and tell their story in the context of Sir John A. and the entire history of Canada. Mm. I, I just think it's important. I, I, I'm against, you know, changing the name of Dundas Street, but I am in favor of giving context to Dundas Street. I think the $21 million that City Council has dedicated to changing 60 street names could be used to actually help members of the BIPOC community. I care more about the homeless person living on Dundas Street than I do changing the name above them. Look, we, we have a lot of problems in the city of Toronto, and believe me, changing the name of Dundas is not one of them. I see this as the powers that be bending the, me, the knee to the mob. These were violent vandals that were trying to get away with breaking the law, and they did get away with breaking the law, and basically, in a way, we've rewarded them, haven't we, by covering up, Sir John? What's your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm never a big fan of uh, mob rule. Uh, I do believe in peaceful protest. I think we have the right under the Charter, freedom of expression. We should have freedom of speech. We don't, but we have freedom of expression. A and I think there's a way in which to convey your animus towards Sir John A. or any of the other people in Canadian history, um, but destroying public property is not the best way to do that. Again, we can harness that energy from people who are uh, disappointed that the statue even stands, the people who are insulted by the legacy of Sir John A., by actually elevating their stories and elevating the story of their ancestors in terms of how they were affected by policies of the of the government of the day. Uh, look, folks, it, you know, I, I tell people this story. I, I grew up at the corner of, you know, Vaughan Road and, and Humewood. Uh, Vaughan was a slave owner. Humewood is named after Sir William, uh, Sir William Hume Blake, who was an abolitionist. I literally grew up at the intersection of abolition and slavery. My next door neighbor was a, a Holocaust survivor who had numbers tattooed on his wrist, and our neighbor across the street was from the First Nations community. We lived in harmony. We, we didn't know the streets that we lived on. We didn't know the history of the names of the people after whom the streets were named. But what we did do, each of us with our own historic, uh, uh, historic trauma, whether it was personal to us in the case of my neighbor or personal to our ancestors, uh, we sort of got on with things and tried to make the best of it and live as a community. I think having grown up in Toronto, never knowing the history of Dundas or Vaughan or even some of the history of Sir John A., this is an opportunity for us to evolve our understanding and I don't think tearing down the statue is, is the best way to do it. I think you're absolutely right again, Rob. And I mean, you know, it's so sad how society has changed. And I think this is just one emblem of what society is going through as a whole. We used to, I remember back in the days when, well, I don't know what they call Ryerson, but when I attended the university, it was Ryerson. Right. You could go and have a debate on the most contentious issues imaginable, gun control, abortion, absolutely. capital punishment, and then later go to the pub and have a beer and now, if you don't think in lockstep with the wokeism uh, people, you will be shunned, you will even be cancelled, you'll be put in an economic penalty box right. for life. Right. I think that's despicable and I think for the provincial government, a progressive conservative government, to allow this is just despicable too. One last question, Rob. Sure. This has been under, I guess, discussion, uh, there's a committee reviewing it. Rob, it's almost three years. I mean, can you imagine business working at this pace, which I would describe as molasses going uphill in wintertime? Well, it's certainly uh, not red tape being cut in terms of making this decision. Look, yeah. I would encourage the Premier uh, to quickly come to a decision, consider the proposal that I've written about today in the, in the Toronto Sun, published in the Toronto Sun, think about the opportunity, and, and by the way, bring in folks from the First Nations community and the BIPOC community, have a reasonable adult conversation about the best way to use these assets and redeploy them in order to educate the community. The class trips to this site would be incredible. An opportunity to teach them about Egerton Ryerson, teach them about Sir John A. Let people know the hurt and the pain that was suffered by people, perhaps by policies that they implemented, but also let them know some of the positive things that have emanated from their existence and from their place in, in the annals of Canadian history. Thanks so much, Rob. And there you have it. I mean, Rob Ford, come on. Stop being flip-flop Ford. You promised way back that you'd bring Victoria's statue over. Now you're too ashamed to have the existing statue. You've covered it up. You're supposed to be a conservative government, or is it a conservative government in name only? For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.
Uh, folks, I know you count on Rebel News to bring you the other side of the story, the story you are not going to get from your taxpayer-funded mainstream media. But that's the thing. We need your support. Please go to rebelfieldreports.com. That's rebelfieldreports.com. And if you can make a financial donation, no matter how small, that would be greatly appreciated.